Good evening everyone. Thanks a lot for staying with us. You're watching Plain Speak with me Shivani Gupta. Within a month of each other, two terrorists who planned to conduct bomb blasts in the country hailing from South India have been blasted by their own devices. On October 23, Jamisha Mubeen was killed himself in a car blast when he was carrying a bomb in Coimbatore a day before Diwali at the Sangameswar temple. Less than a month later, a resident of Shivmogha district Mohammad Sharif was injured when the improvised explosive device in a pressure cooker he was carrying in an auto rickshaw on November 19 exploded in Bengaluru. Both initial investigations says planned to conduct multiple bomb attacks in India. It is fortuitous for the public in Mangalore and Coimbatore then the accused were themselves hurt before they could do any serious damage. But what this does explode in our faces is the reality of radicalization especially in states like Karnataka and Tamil Nadu and not just Kerala anymore. Most of these accused are linked to global terror networks especially the ISIS and handlers from the Al Hind. These men are young, educated and highly radicalized. We've all seen what such terrorists are capable of. Is there a section in Indian politics and civil circles that wants to bury their heads in the sand and pretend like there is no issue to be worried about or work overtime to deflect from troubling realities by making excuses or alibis for terror and terrorists? We will take those questions to our guests in a bit but first let me just break down more about the accused Mohammad Sharif in this case. Of course he's alive. The police is hoping he will spill more of the beans. Now this man is a 24 year old Shivmogha resident. But he's also been accused and this is the horrifying aspect of this man he's been accused in three previous cases he was held actually in 2020 for anti national graffiti in mangaluru he is also someone who has conducted quote and quote a trial blast in september in shivmogha where he hails from before he planned to conduct a full fledged blast materials used to make explosive devices have been recovered from his rented home fake aadhars pan card even a debit card have been recovered from his home and it is quite clear and this is what the police say he is clearly driven by isis ideology let's also take a look at the forgery and the deception involved in preparing for this blast and the geographical trail of sharik his first link is in hubli because he forged the aadhar card of a hubli resident this person premraj had lost his aadhar card months ago but it was found with the terror accused then there is coimbatore Sharik traveled to the city in September. He in fact procured a mobile there is what the agencies say. This was also procured using the Aadhaar card belonging to someone else. In this case though it was given willfully. Then there is Mysore. The four tower dump shows that the accused stayed here. In fact the police say he traveled extensively in Tamil Nadu over the last few months as well. But it's in Mysore where he rented a flat using the previous forged Aadhaar card. and also use this house to make the bombs where the material was found and then finally is mangaluru where the blast eventually took place not the intended blast but the blast which nearly took the life of the accused himself and the auto rickshaw driver now the police say that this suspect traveled from mysuru to mangaluru on saturday morning probably in a bus and after deboarding that he caught the auto rickshaw at the naguri bus station He was on route to some location we don't really have the details of what he was planning whether he was planning to go to the eventual location where he wanted to conduct the blast we don't quite know yet but we are waiting for more updates but some more details are coming to light of his alleged handlers and this gives you an idea why we're talking about the ISIS threat remember probe is in an initial stage but this is what we know right now now sharik's immediate handler was a man called arafat ali he is also accused in two other cases and i will come to that point how so many people who are accused are really at large and they're managing to conduct or try to conduct more blasts but the main man is this abdul mateen taha he was the main handler he is an wanted isis operator in fact he's wanted since the al hind isis bengaluru module case came to light in 2020 his house was actually raided by the nia in may 2020 so he's been on the radar he has a bounty of 3 lakh rupees on his head and reports say that he's absconding some reports indicate that he could well be in dubai and finally there is a man called musaffir hussain whose name has been taken by the police he was in touch with the accused sharik in the coimbatore blast case he is also accused in this blast and also the al hind isis bengaluru module case so a lot of the same names and figures are coming to light 
you would remember that was the case as far as the Coimbatore blast was also concerned. There were individuals who had already been on the radar that were then conducting and regrouping. So there are serious concerns of how these men continued to be out and about despite priors. The big question we ask today is, is the ISIS threat undeniable? Information of Sari. Couple of months ago, in the month of October on 23rd, I think, in Coimbatore, similar incidents has taken place. There also, they had planned to blast around the temple. By and large, the political reactions in response to what has come to light in Mangaluru have been fairly reasonable. But there is, of course, a political fight that did emerge initially. I'm going to keep the politics aside initially, but I will go to the larger question I asked. If there is some political cover that is provided when such cases come to light. Captain Ganesh Karnik is a BJP spokesperson joining us on the show. Nagaraju Yadav is from the Karnataka Congress. Rahul Ishwar, author and activist. Praveen Dixit, former DGP. Uh, and Alok Bansal, India Foundation Director, are first joining us. I want to go to our experts first and I want to go to Mr. Dikshit first because the larger question that is coming to mind, Mr. Dikshit, is that how did people like this individual Sharik or even others that the so-called Al-Hind module were uh, participating, how did they roam around freely? How are they free out and about despite the fact that this man was on the radar since 2020? His handler been, has been on the radar since 2020. Fine, he may have absconded uh, overseas. But this guy, Sharik, was bold enough to carry out, quote-unquote, a trial blast in his home uh, district of Shivmoga and then was absconding, then was roaming around Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Is that not a major concern? Well, it's a definitely a major concern. In fact, uh, you may recall, right from uh, the when the war was on in Syria side, the ISIS, had been successful in uh, recruiting several youth mm. from uh, Kerala. A few of them uh, were uh, re also returned, but some of them they died. Mm -hmm. There were also some ladies which were forced to go to the war side. Yes. And they were also being uh, used in a very wrong manner. It appears that uh, Kerala, the borders of Kerala, including Tamil Nadu and uh, Karnataka, mm. all these three places, the uh, certain elements are definitely up to the mischief. And uh, as you know, the PFI was also very active in, in these, these areas. areas. Yes. In fact, even after the uh, action against uh, PFI, there must be a number of persons uh, who are having links with PFI and in connection uh, also with ISIS and uh, Al-Qaeda hmm. who have been uh, operating from uh, different uh, places. And these are modules which uh, come to light, but sometimes uh, they manage to disappear and uh, get lost in the wilderness. Can I, uh, can I just fact, ask you a very direct question, Mr. Deekshit, if you don't mind, I'm interrupting you. If Can I ask you a very direct question? And this has also been raised politically that in some states, there is a lackadaisical attitude when it comes to grabbing such quote-unquote suspects, people with priors. There's also a tendency to say that, you know, oh, the laws are too harsh. So what if you, if you wrote a graffiti against India saying that let's invite L.E.T. into India or threatens the country and its sovereignty and its security, uh, they shouldn't rot in prison. You know, is, is that a problem, you think? Because certainly in this case, there are so many individuals who have such dubious history. Well, certainly the political 
patronage to a certain extent may be there. But uh, the police administration in these states hmm. should have been firm and uh, rejecting uh, the pressures and taking action against uh, such persons who are involved in the radicalized efforts. In fact, I would go a step ahead hmm. and say that the organization of Muslim federations or the federation of Muslim organizations or as well as their parents, they must come forward in a bold manner and raise their voice against uh, such persons who are suspect and who are radicalized because they know they are having a lot of information. So they need to come forward and uh, say boldly that these are the persons whom we are uh, doubting yeah. and take action against them. Yeah, it's absolutely. Because ultimately, of, uh, it is Muslim to... boys who are being radicalized and are being pushed into either conducting bomb blasts or even become suicide bombers. Rahul Ishwar, I want to come to you because this case is also bringing us uh, the memories of Coimbatore blast that are coming back to light. There is an allegation in Tamil Nadu especially that there is a tendency even by the administration to go slow or go soft or to underplay the threat. Do you think that's fair? That's a fair accusation to make or is that just political accusations? No, that's a fair accusation to make and we should take it very seriously. See, coming from Kerala, let me point out three things. One, Kerala is home to nearly 27 percentage of our Muslim brothers. We are home to nearly one crore uh, Muslim brothers. Majority of our Muslim brothers and sisters, 99.99 are well integrated. We are a very great space for pluralism. At the same point of time, there is a strand of Islamist terrorism, which is a danger to India, Kerala and the world itself. For example, Kerala CM, who is a left CM, Sri Pinrai Vijayan, accepted that nearly 100 people of Kerala base went and joined ISIS. A former leftist chief minister, Sri B.S. Achudanandan, said there is a dubious conspiracy to make Kerala into an Islamic state in some years. Please remember, this was not told by anybody in the right, but, you know, a left wing, the senior most communist leader of India, Sri B.S. Yeah, and all of these warnings were given nearly a decade ago. What did we do since then? We're still exactly. fighting over so, how strong we need to act against so, this. So, so, that, so that brings to your very important question because many people out of the fear of vote bank or out of the fear of the so-called minority vote bank being offended either go slow, either play the ball, either cover it up. But please remember, this is insulting our very own, own Muslim brothers. Absolutely. See, anybody, terrorism, terrorism is a danger to the entire mankind. And please remember, even Muslim majority nations have taken strong steps against Islamist radicalism in their own nations. Mm. So our politicians out of pseudo-secularism and vote bank consideration should not shy away because that is insulting our Muslims and that is also endangering India. So this is a very serious thing we should discuss and we should find out solution and radicalization. Extreme Wahhabi or Islam is whichever name you want to call it but that radicalization is a serious issue and girl forced conversions are a serious issue this is one thing we need intellectual honesty and political honesty to deal with yeah can i just point out even though like i said uh, eventually the responses to what has come to light in mangaluru have been fairly mature remember karnataka is also almost in election mode uh, because it's going to see a very uh, highly fought election state election soon but D.K. Shivkumar, who's one of the tallest leaders of the Congress party in Karnataka, and I'm coming to you, uh, I, he said, I don't know why they're giving a different color. First, government should come out with what is the fact of the blast. I don't know why they're linking it to a terror blast. Why are they calling, telling terror? They should be, there should be proper evidence and they should not keep the entire area under threat in the name of terrorism. Now, Nagaraju Yadav, my question to you as a Congress spokesperson is, why is D.K. Shivkumar even commenting on this? No, no, no. Why commenting is, it, it is in a democracy, he is heading the political party and he has made a comment, he has made a comment in such a way that he wants the truth to be come out because this act is not acceptable to Congress, even Shivkumar is not justifying this act. No, he this hasn't. I will concede will that. But why do no, politicians come out? Man. One second, no, why do politicians come out and raise some sort of suspicion? No, on no, what no, the police is doing or what the government is doing. My question is, what business does DK Shivkumar have? He's not a home minister. He is not in the police. He is not someone who's privy to information. What business does he have to even comment on what the police is saying? One minute, one minute, one minute. He had not called a press conference at this by voluntary by himself. Some of the media person connected to same some media like you, but I asked me a question, he must answer this question. He so the choice is his, how he answers the question. The problem is not in the question that is posed. No, allow me to complete. This is not fair. What Are you I'm blaming the media for taking his reaction? So what? 
नाउ द मैटर कम्स हियर वेरी क्लियरली शिव कुमार साहब और कांग्रेस पार्टी और सिद्धरामैया साहब और करके साहब विल नॉट जस्टिफाई एनी ऑफ दिस काइंड ऑफ एक्ट इट्स जीरो टॉलरेंस ओवर टेररिज्म एक्ट इन कर्नाटक और एनीवेयर इन इंडिया फॉर एज द कंट्री बिकम्स फास्ट नाउ आई एम टेलिंग यू वेरी क्लियरली डोंट टेक इट एज अ पॉलिटिकल स्टेटमेंट आई एम टेलिंग यू एज अ स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन ऑफ कांग्रेस इट्स अ फेलियर ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस इट्स अ फेलियर ऑफ इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी ऑफ द कंट्री आई एम टेलिंग यू फ्रॉम 2014 टू 2020 द क्वेश्चन द रीजन आई एम आस्किंग यू दिस क्वेश्चन मिस्टर यादव इज आल्सो बिकॉज़ योर कांग्रेस गवर्नमेंट अंडर सिद्धरमैया released hundreds of people with pfi connection from jails now i want to understand on what basis was that amnesty given given that we knew even back then what the pfi stood for and what its people were doing on the ground we've got siddaramaiya your former chief minister saying bjp rss bajrang dal are like terrorists he goes on to say since we don't have any proof right now we have not initiated any action this is in 2018 there is no proof that pfi is behind the murder of rss activist rudresh and we will not tolerate anyone who tries to disturb social harmony my question is this so called religious divide it comes from politicians not from citizens when we speak of terror don't agree that failure of intelligence and failure of intelligence i spoke about the intelligence failure at the very start of this discussion but i'm not going to shy away from talking about political responsibility you didn't hear we what i was saying of your former chief minister and we their comments but let ganesh karnik come it now we don't accept these things we don't tolerate whichever group belongs to it whether it's al qaeda whether it's isis or whether it's terrorist to the terrorist should be should be hanged and shot at sight okay ganesh karnik yes shivani is there a political uh, is there a, is, is, the there a se, though, is there a tendency mr karnik in india for whatever reasons we want to appear as very very forgiving we want to appear as open or vote bank or other considerations we don't want to be called islamophobic etc but there's a tendency to deny the truth on the ground the reality on the ground is that there is deep islamic radicalization yes yes i totally agree with you there is a deep radicalization based on a particular faith and we have continuously denied this now talking of mangalore and you asked a question is there a police patronage and is there a political patronage my dear friend mr uh, nagraj statement says that yes there has been kind of a political patronage for old bank politics i will quote few incidents which have happened in uh, mangalore since 2008 you people are made mangalore as a laboratory for uh, testing your hindutva Uh, no, uh, ma- uh, Shivani, please I ask that people. Part, I just, it is completely terrorist. Okay, can I just yes. come in, Mr. Yadav? Uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to what Mr. Yes. Ganesh Karnik says, but let him have his say. I'll come back to you. See, in 2008, as early as 2008, five people were arrested from a place called Chembugude in Ullal for bomb manufacturing by NIA. 2013, in a flat in place called Atavar. the founder of mujahideen yasin batkal his brother riyas batkal and half a dozen people were arrested and with materials required for bomb manufacture in 2013 again from a place called panji mogaru bihar police come and arrest a lady by name aisha who had transferred crores of rupees for terrorist activities in 2015 a person by name riyaz saidi moving from batkal to dubai was arrested by police at the airport on suspicion in 2016 again nia arrested a person called ajmal huda the same sharik we are talking of was arrested for wall writing which you mentioned about it hmm. and moreover one of the congress mlas uh, converted uh, daughter in law maryam whose involvement in ics was confirmed and nik nai came and arrested hmm. besides this prashant pujari and then uh, deepak rao sharath madiwal and recently uh, pravin netar they were murdered by pfi no i appreciate you taking it. us through the history but mr yes. kanik the reality also is that the bjp has been in power for for a few years now in karnataka and let me yes. repose that question to you that i was asking our former yes. dgp our former cop on the panel yes. how were these people roaming free exactly i will tell you see during the past about 8 9 years these activities had come down once the pfi has been banned 
suddenly the activities of pfi and all those active you know uh, organizations linked with the terrorists have started activating beat combatant blast or beat what happened in mangalore recently because of the involvement of the government and serious uh, concern about all these activities past 7 8 years things had come down to can almost can a standstill yes okay let Suddenly, mr yadav come in now mr karnik just hold your thought let me let mr yadav come in mr karnik went through the history what happened to the person who wanted to give a uh, do a bomb blast in the airport in mangalore who is group was involved there he was he was not in, involved in the sangha parivar group Let me not. Not at all. No, no. Today I'm telling you, Sharik is the guy who in Shumaga, where he was involved in one particular thing. He was involved in a uh, um, trial of bomb, bomb blast in Shumaga. Then he came to Mysore. How is it moving around so freely? How is it going in the bus? How is it going in the auto? Where there is no intelligence working in Karnataka state? Is the government minister is capable of handling the uh, terrorist act or uh, crime activities in Karnataka? Is he is he capable do? of doing it? Even at uh, seven o'clock, if a rape takes place in Mysore, he says that why does the girl go there? Is this an attitude they have? If some the some uh, act, an accident a, happens. and a murder happened there then they come and say that something else happened here they keep giving well, us to it basically i'm telling you mangalore has become so sensitive only because uh, politically bjp is may used it as a laboratory for their uh, hindu to activities okay very quickly mr tane please respond i have to go yes, to our last guest yes, also who hasn't yes, spoken yeah. terrorism i yeah. totally condemn it We okay. want India to be peaceful. Our people should be secure. That yeah, but for that, Mr. Yadav, I'm sorry to say, yeah. politicians yeah. need to yeah. stop yeah. mincing their words. They need to stop the, giving alibis to radicals. Shivani, they need to Shivani, stop giving the, alibis the, to terrorists. Shiv, Shivani, this is the political patronage of the National Party called Congress. They have no, always said, not in that something. This is not a political attack. We are, we are zero tolerance for terrorism activities. Please, please, clearly condemn this Muslim Islamic uh, radicalism. You uh, condemn this openly. No, condemn I'm this. asking you how the how the Shari is moving from Shumaga to Mysore, Mysore to Mangalore. How is he moving no. around? You please you answer condemn. me. Where is your home you minister working? Is your home minister working and handling this thing? You, is your home minister able to give you a statement? You condemn this Islamic Actually, terrorism, fair and uh, proper. Why don't you condemn this? It is not Mangalore. It is happening in the entire country. That's true. Actually, I want to take that point forward. While we are discussing, we are focusing on the pattern emerging in southern India. Yes. The reality right. of ISIS recruitment, self radicalization, uh, radicalization via the internet. It's a reality all across the country. It's a reality all across the world today. Shivani, ask him to con- condemn this. As uh, a sir, I cannot waste time party. till he does or does not do. He has said very clearly that he, they do not condone any of these activities. They condemn it. They should be hanged. We'll hold them to their word. But we do know the history of statements that have come in from the Congress party or other parties. Anyways, Alok Bansal, I want to come to you. You look at the pattern that is emerging. I have two fold question for you. One. especially as one of our experts said one after the ban on the pfi you know that was mingling very freely in social circles and had a legitimacy of sorts and had a bravado thinking that nothing could happen to them do you think post the ban on them there is a heightened sense that something needs to be done in india and everybody is activated secondly you look at the pattern young upwardly mobile educated young men from the muslim community are getting radicalized to the extent they either want to blow themselves up or want to blow their fellow indians up is this See, threat the, just the, too the real to ignore been, anymore radicalization has been a big problem uh, not only in uh, india but specifically in south india it's been growing by leaps and bounds hmm. and uh, most of the people who are radicalized are educated uh, people who have been radicalized by a narrative which is seeped in islamic theology and has been propagated through the means of internet and this has actually this was seen even earlier when abu bakar al baghdadi had captured mosul people who were youngsters from uh, south india uh, from uh, places like hyderabad and other places actually wanted to go and fight there and this process has been going on for a long time mm. unfortunately certain Uh, members of a security establishment and political establishments have not been seeing the threat that emanates from Why these is jihadis Why is that uh, now the ban on pfi has actually forced many of them to come up front because the, with the ban of pfi and investigations going on many of them fear that their whole network will get unearthed and that's why i think there is a desperation amongst these people who are associated with pfi to come out or move around or indulge in acts 
that uh, uh, like in this particular case, I don't know whether it, he was carrying the bomb and it exploded. It was a deliberate aim or it was an accident. No, this so was clearly, uh, the the, he was clearly carrying the improvised device in that auto, possibly carried it in the bus from Mysuru to Mangaluru. And then it exploded possibly because of the heat or the friction is what the police believe. So it wasn't the intended target, of course, quite like the, in the case That's of right. Coimbatore. And in both of these cases, maybe not so much in Mangaluru, but in Coimbatore, there was a clear attempt in the first 48 hours to downplay what had happened. They couldn't eventually be on the point. But Alok Bansal, you made a point about that security establishment has not been able to see the threat. I wonder why. Let me take that to the former DGP on our panel, Mr. Dixit. Is the security establishment uh, not serious enough about the threat? Or do they, are they, uh, are they, under, uh, they underestimating this threat in India? No, in fact, you see, right from 2014-15 onwards, the threat of radicalization very much was uh, very much was possible, very much was uh, visible, and action was initiated against them. In fact, a lot of initiatives were taken, but in between, there were after this uh, ISIS uh, was completely defeated from Syria Syrian side. There was a uh, perhaps uh, some kind of uh, you can say uh, negligence. Mm. particularly in South uh, uh, Indian side. Mm. And uh, that was uh, taken advantage by the PFI. Mm. Through their PFI network, they spread their tentacles. Now, in fact, this uh, ban against uh, PFI should have been initiated, uh, I would say, much, much before, right, right uh, from the time of 2016-17 uh, onwards. Now, what has happened is, though the PFI has been banned, their tentacles or their persons are available everywhere. True. They are available in uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka. A few of them have been arrested, but now they are spread so deep and the radicalization is also so complete hmm. that to trace them and to nail them has become a great uh, or rather difficult And let's task. not forget, as I mentioned I'm at sure. the start of the show, it is only sheer luck that these two individuals were not able to carry out the blast that they intended to carry out and hurt other people. They got hurt instead. Well, that's karma for you. Fact, you see, but the yes, Mr. Dixit, please has finish. To be strengthened in all these areas, and that will come forward uh, with the help of uh, local Muslims as well. So the confidence of the Muslims has to be restored hmm. in the system, and they need to be more uh, vocal to point out uh, certain elements which are uh, spoiling the name of the entire community right. and uh, radicalizing the youth. Absolutely, it is against the particularly the youth which have to be targeted by uh, giving them the proper uh, analysis, by telling them this is not the correct way and uh, this will end up not only yourself but you also know, your entire... The sense that I'm getting is that well. uh, the community in itself needs to take certain responsibility as well and Rahul Ishwar, I have discussed this even at the cost of, you know, being disliked for saying this but, you know, I don't think that there's any point in being politically correct anymore. The community needs to come out and make it absolutely clear that they are not going to tolerate this. If we can have people that's come out and create ruckus on the streets for a Nupur Sharma comment, we need to see the Muslim community also come out and say we don't stand for terror. But we don't see that. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Thank that, you for that courage and thank, thank you for saying it aloud. No, no, thank I have said it. And thank you. People may dislike Absolutely, it. But yes. my point is, see, Rahul, see, this is what add we need. to that and also the fact that as someone who comes from South India, where we hear about how peaceful the society is, how educated the people are, how, you know, uh, how they are, they, their interests in life are completely different. There used to be this binary, right, between South India and North India. Correct, the problem correct, correct. is that now South India is becoming almost a hub of terror. That's a problem. And we, sh and we should stop it because it will affect everyone. And yeah. you know, as you rightly said, Sufi Mahapanjayat of India has categorically said, even some people in Saudi are funding, you know, uh, terrorism in India and world around. We have a very great Muslim, pluralistic Muslim league. We have MES. We have an evolving jamaat -e islami We have such mainstream Muslim organization. You know, they are working towards de-radicalization. And, you know, we should be open and honest in telling this. We should call it for what it is. It is Islamist terrorism or Islamist radicalism is a truth. And, and just let's not say sufficient. things like like terror has no religion, but it has a religion yeah, when it is a Hindu activist. Let us not sugarcoat. I mean, let that's just bogus now.
If religious theology is being used to conduct terror and terror attacks and for radicalizing people, I'm sorry, terror has a religion. Religion has a face. Just one more submission. We have the experience of Nimisha Fatima, Sonia Sebastian, Hindu and Christian girls who were forcefully converted and they are ending up in Afghan jail. They were going to Syria. See, these are serious real problems. And I'm sorry to openly say this, but everyone knows in Kerala that you know one girl, Nimisha Fatima, is the brother or sister of a major in Indian army. So there is a deep radicalization issue. We should be honest about. Yeah, yes, you possibly what Arsina, you're suggesting you is that this could Sadi happen Prachi. to anybody. If you look at the backgrounds exactly. of these people who are now accused exactly. in bomb blasts, who are actually conducting bomb blasts, are terrorists. Rather than they're all educated individuals. In fact, they have higher about. education, not just you know school exactly. education, and but. And rather than being politically correct, let us be intellectually honest because bombs don't differentiate between Hindus, Muslims or Christians. You know, bombs are truly non-religious, non-political. It will burn us everyone. So it will be danger to entire mankind and we should be politically honest rather okay. than being merely politically correct. Yeah, absolutely. I want to give Mr. Yadav and Mr. Karnik 30 seconds each. Sir, please, I do not have more time. Mr. Yadav, you wanted to come in. No, no. My, my way my way of saying is this the government should take it more seriously and handle this the indian land is not will not allow any ter terrorism activity it should be zero tolerance for terrorism where the community should come forward whichever community for that matter which, which uh, their youngsters are getting involved in this kind of attitude radicalism uh, activities they should come forward and put an end to it and they say no space for uh, such uh, radicalization or such kind of terror activity okay, in india fair because enough. whether it's hindu or we would like that no implemented when leaders give sound bites as in the case of Dukhke Shiv Kumar in this case, or when they speak at rallies and when they go and fight elections. Mr. Karnik, I have 20 seconds left for you. Mr. Karnik. Uh, Shivani, I compliment you for that bold statement. It is Islamic radicalization and we need to condemn it, first of all. Secondly, political parties, when in power, should not take such stupid decisions like releasing PFI people just because of political patronage. And terrorism, terrorism, and terrorist is a terrorist. We have to condemn it unequivocally without yes, any confusion. Yeah. You know, there used to be a period in Indian, Indian uh, history, in fact, history, in fact, recent Indian history and politics, where people were even giving uh, alibis to terrorists or uh, they were romanticizing terrorists or they were rationalizing terror. Oh, these people pick up the gun because so and so, this has no, happened to them. Not at right? all. All of that I has fallen by the wayside. What we know is that this is just this. plain cold religious radicalization. You may have had whatever life you had. Nothing or something could have happened to you. Nothing justifies you, uh, you know, becoming a terrorist. Because if everybody poor in this world became a terrorist, or somebody who has faced some injustice became a terrorist, we could all become terrorists. But we don't. So let's not make those rationalizations for terror. I've run out of time. I do thank all of our guests for joining us.